Hello, I'm Father Louis Skirty, and I welcome you to Friends of the Word. And today we celebrate the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. And uh, what we're going to do now is cite the readings before the Gospel and homily. And this way you can read the readings and then later on listen to the homily if you wish. It's 1 Samuel chapter 3 is the first reading. The second reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And the third reading is the Holy Gospel from John chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. And this way we won't read the, the Gospel, we'll let you do that at home and then listen to the homily. Thank you for joining us. Pass this on to your family and friends, and let's continue the growth of Friends of the Word. Contact me at fatherlouskurdy at hotmail.com. I find some memorable quotes today in the scriptures, and maybe that's a, a good reason for all of us to read the scriptures of the day, like during the week, before Mass, before we come to the celebration on Sunday, just to have an idea. If you want to research further, there's always that option, but I think it's great to have an idea of what the readings are going to be about on Sunday, and you ha you, we can be prepared for them. For instance, the, some of the quotes that stand out uh, memorably in this week's readings, the, the dis disciples who are looking for Jesus, and Jesus turning to them and saying, now imagine this being said to you, whom do you seek? Who are you looking for? Who, what are you looking for in your life? Okay, another memorable quote from the first reading from, from the book of Samuel. Samuel, interesting book. Um, Samuel shows the growth of the priesthood in the Old Testament. Samuel is the apprentice in this point to Eli. Eli is the priest. And Samuel's, Samuel is very special. He was born of Hannah, and Hannah was thought, like Mary, centuries later, to be barren. And she prayed that if she had a son, she would dedicate the son to God. And sure enough, Hannah has a child, his, his name is Samuel, and she gives him over to the priest of the temple to be groomed, to serve at the temple. His job, it seems, to at this point in his life, was to just watch the light, the, the flame, make sure the flame in the temple was always on. That's why we see him at night and he's sleeping and what happens is, there's a voice that calls him. And what does he do? Like, ordinarily, anyone would do, yes, you, you called. And he goes over to Eli, who's also sleeping. And this happens three times. And then the final time, Eli tells him, listen, when you hear the voice calling you, just say, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. So the third time, Samuel goes back to sleep. He hears the voice. And he responds, as he told, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And that's another one of the quotes I think are very significant for today. Any time that we are in prayer, in confusion, in accomplishment, it doesn't matter where we are, time of day, just imagine God speaking to us how appropriately we could make that moment a prayerful moment, whatever it is we're doing. Saying to God, speak, your servant is listening. Telling God, I'm, okay, I'm with you. I may be shopping, I may be doing grocery shopping, I may be serving the poor, I may be visiting, I may be going to a party, but speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Memorable quote for us. Now, we as, as Catholics do not have the tradition of memorizing uh, sections of scripture, but it's a good tradition. Nothing wrong with it, of course, but that would be one of the ones that I would like to always hold dear. Another one is, comes from the Lord's Prayer, your will be done, but that's not related to today's readings, but it's again a significant way of praying to God that we are one with him. And of course, 
The question is, are we being called by God? And what are we being called by God to do? Well, uh, Samuel, of course, was being groomed as a future priest, and, and the apostles were called by Jesus, and, and after John pointed Jesus out to them, they're called to be apostles. What are we called to do? We're called to be Christians. And that's our vocatio, our vocation, our call. Whether we're retired, whether we're young, whether we're children, whether we're adults, we're married, single, it doesn't matter. We're called to be, because we've been baptized into the body of Christ that Paul reminds us of today, we're called to be the temples of the Holy Spirit in all things. Now, that doesn't mean you float. That doesn't mean we're going to be saints all the time. But we're called to be saints. We're called to be people who bring the body of Christ into the world through our own bodies, through our own actions. That's why that, that significant reading from Paul to the Corinthians is so, so important. Uh, he's, he's emphasizing the role of the body today. Now, of course, people of Corinth were a little off the wall there. Those who were Christians had their own manipulative way of looking at Christianity. They're saying, you know, the, we're Christians in spirit. Our bodies aren't Christians, just our spirits are Christians. So we can go to hell with our bodies. And they did. They, they did everything they could possibly would think of with their bodies. And Paul said, no, 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 no. Let, let, let's get back on track. Because it's not just half of you, the inside of you, the outside of you. You are completely the temple of Jesus Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and a great price was paid for that body of yours, body and soul, oneness, the blood of Christ. So you are very, very important, and your body is important. Body and soul, mind, heart, all of you working together, integrated into the whole person that we are, again, for the glory of Christ. To do what we do, whatever the job is, if it's a task, if it's a vocation, if it's music ministry, if it's lecturing, if it's a, a good parent, doing whatever we do as temples of the Holy Spirit, being honest to God and being one with God, integrating him. Tell, listen, Lord, uh, let me listen to your voice. Let me in, interpret this action right now in front of me our way of responding to God, always asking Jesus, where, can I, where are you going with my life? Where are you going? Where do you abide, the apostle said? Where, where are you living? I can just imagine Jesus saying, I'm living right there. I'm living in you. So what you do, I'm doing to the world. What they see out there, they see me, Christ, through you. We, we, uh, well, most of us, I absolutely uh, admire Francis, Pope Francis, and what he does is so authentically Christian. And when, you know, seven million Catholics in, in, in the Philippines gather to, to celebrate Mass with it, that says something to this man who's already sent out feelers into the world as to the importance of life, importance of the individual, importance of, 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 of the dignity of, of people of all ages and sizes and races and, and genders. So, so when, when Paul reiterates, you, your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, think of Francis in this case. How he is a temple of the Holy Spirit and teaches all of us to be temples of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have a corner on the market. Scripture said that centuries ago. But sometimes we need to remember that. That not only am I a temple of the Holy Spirit, but each one of us that we love, that we respect, that we help, and regrettably that we mock also temples of the Holy Spirit. So it, it puts us in position. Where are we going? We're, we're following Christ. And if we follow Christ, then we're living his message and bringing his, the, the word and, and his dignity that he blesses all of us with to, to each other, to the poor, to the marginalized, to those who suffer, to the unemployed. And our dignity is highlighted by the fact that we actually do for these other people, not only ourselves. Word and action, holistically. Word and action, head, mind, heart, body, working together, brain, voting, all of it, working together to be temples of the Holy Spirit and to be people who live out the message of God in our lives. See, following Christ is a, is a very conscious choice. Now, you can just say, I'm baptized, and that's it. I go to church Christmas, Easter, some Sundays. But following Christ committedly 
is a conscious choice that takes our head, our heart, our mind, our body, the, the whole self. And when Paul says avoid immorality, yes, he's talking especially to the Corinthians sexual immorality, but you know, apathy is immorality. Any kind of sin that, that denigrates the person, another person, is immorality. Stupid racist, racist jokes are immoral. And the list goes on. So we're being called by Paul to avoid immorality of all sorts. And sometimes we have to turn away from it. And I think of that interview that one of the NBC newscasters had with a comedian years ago when, when the comedian was being asked to comment on the inappropriate behavior of a famous golfer. Okay, I need to name names. And the comedians and, and the, the interviewer said to the comedian, what would you have told him? You know, when he's being surrounded by all these temptations, all these pretty ladies, what would you have told him to, to get him out of this situation? And, and the comedian said, very simply, I would have told him, go home. Just go home. You know what? How simple? That person, yes. Teaching himself morality. Teaching his friend morality. Come on, we're all tempted all day, 24-7. We're tempted by something immoral. And it, it doesn't only have to be sexual. Let's not get crazy with that only. But we're, we're tempted by, to be disrespectful. We're, we're tempted to be bullies. We're tempted to, to cut people off when we're driving. We're temp tempted to treat people like trash. They're not doing the kind of work I'm doing. It, but up your nose, the kind of work you're doing and the, and the status you are. We're all temples of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing better. We're all temples of the Holy Spirit. And our obligation is to treat each other with that same dignity. Temples of the Holy Spirit who were purchased at a great price. Sometimes we need to be reminded by outsiders that we're called to be temples of the Holy Spirit. Responding to the vocation. And in many ways, Francis does teach us that, the Pope, does teach us that, the dignity of all people. And it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're developmentally disabled or old or elderly or infirm, in any, it doesn't matter who you are. We all are called to be dignified people and treat one another with dignity. And we're all called the vocation. We're baptized Christians. We're all called to be temples of the Holy Spirit, to be imitators of Jesus Christ. Now, my own life, I remember as a, as a freshman in high school, see, I, I, I think I was the poster child for ADD because I, you know, I was like all over. I was in Catholic school all, all my life, always Catholic school. So thank God my parents put me in Catholic school because they had that extra kind of uh, flexibility or understanding or patience. Who knows what the grace was? But they treated me well. And even though I was uh, off the walls so often, like misbehaving, talking out, you know, active, I, I remember one nun saying to me, Skirty, sit on your hands. Sit on my hands. Now describe a spiral staircase. I said, one that starts like this and goes down like this. <laughs> the nuns knew how to grab, grab. And, and I think of my freshman year high school. I mean, it's really terrible. I have to admit it. This is my public penance. We used to have these little cardboard boxes that we used to collect for the poor, okay? So it was my job, because she kept me, she, the nun was trying to keep me out of trouble. It was my job to collect in those poor boxes every day during Lent. So, we all come back from lunch, and we'd all, and this is not, I'm not getting, putting this, this is not an example to follow, okay? This is a mea culpa, okay? We all get, we're told to, any money you had left in your pockets, we're going to the missions, you know, for the poor during Lent, no problem. And it was my job to do it, to collect. Well, I got the rattiest looking box I could get, and I'd, I'd shake down all my classmates. Of course, I was bold and brazen and all that stuff. Come on, come on, give me, oh, come on, I know you have more than that. And, and, and I'd shake the box, shake the box. And my philosophy is, sorry, Jesus, my philosophy was what stays in the box goes to sister. What stays in my hand goes in my pocket. So I stole. I can't believe it. I stole every day during Lent. Now, I've made penance with that, and I've made, I've made reconciliation over that. But, okay, so now I'm thinking, wise, wise guy that I am, she didn't know what I was doing. At the end of Lent, i never forget that. At the end of Lent, sister calls me over. She says, uh, Skirty, she says, um, you think going to become a priest? Oh, I said, are you kidding me? And I had to go back to my seat to tell everybody around me. She thinks I'm going to become a priest. Ha, 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 ha. God had something else on his mind, didn't he? Than what Skirty had on his mind. 
And he wanted that guy, that freshman who was stealing, to be a priest. I don't know why, but that was his choice. So the guy sleeping in the temple? I'm here just to sleep and take care of the light. God is calling you. The, the apostles with, 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 with the John the Baptist? We're following John. We want to be one of you, John. We want to be a rebel and a Zionist like you. That's the Lamb of God. God is calling you. All of us, in our own confused state sometimes, in our own uh, narcissism sometimes, we have to, whoa, tone it down and put ourselves before God and, and be honest with, with him. Speak, Lord. Your, your servant is listening. And I've had to say that a million times at least in my life. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And, and, and don't, don't think that because Eli is in the temple, he has a nice family, you know, like we always think of uh, we, we should have married priests. Whether we do or not, it, to me, is irrelevant. If God wants it, fine. That's, that's. But we always think, oh, married priests, that'd be nice. Could you imagine the burden on the children of married priests? And, and our Protestant brothers and sisters and, and rabbis have the same problem. Their, their kids are always under the microscope. Well, let me tell you, that's nothing new. Eli's kids, Eli, the priests, one abused the women at the temple, one refused to go to church, one refused to observe the father's decrees, one refused to take on the, the mantle of priesthood because it was in the family. None of them. They were troubled kids, Eli's kids. And who does he adopt? Samuel. See how God speaks to us and God responds and God gets to us. If he wants you, he will get you. That's your vocation. If he wants us, he will get us to do his will. But we've got to cooperate. We've got to put head, heart, mind together. Years ago, there was an author, Joseph Goldberner, and he wrote, Holiness is wholeness. And I read that when I was in college. I reread it when I was in the seminary, and I have it on my bookshelf. Holiness is wholeness. From a psychologist's point of view, to be a whole person, you must be holy. One with God. And that's in every aspect of our lives. Every practical and impractical aspect of our lives, our task is, I am listening, Lord. Speak to your servant. Jesus, where are you going? I want to follow. With all my strengths and my weaknesses, I want to follow. I'll close with one story with another nun. <laughs> Sister, she's the principal. So four years later, fast forward four years, I didn't get any better in the high school. I was a good student, regrettably. No, not regrettably, thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But I was a good student, so I always, you know, was taken care of by the nuns. I always had good grades and all this good stuff. And I was on a lot of committees and all that. But I was always in trouble. I always spoke out and did things. If they said go this way, I would go that way, just for the sake of doing it. Again, not promoting myself. I'm just saying that's the kind of kid I was. So it's my senior year. I'm in trouble like 16 times. And the principal is constantly on my back, on my back, on my back. And one day she says to me, she says, Skirty, Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got to tell you this, though. She called my parents more than once to come in because we have to meet with, with, with the parents. My mother would say, well, what, what, we'll come at 6 o'clock. So, oh, no, no, you got to come at 3 o'clock. She says, hey, sister, she says, my husband's working. I'm doing my ironing. We're not coming at 3 o'clock. <laughs> so those are the days when women had more of a voice. Okay, so she says to me, Scurdy, what are you going to do when you graduate high school? I said, I'm going, to go to, I'm going to go to seminary. I'm going to become a priest. I go, I'd give a right to her, right? Because I wasn't thinking of that. The Holy Spirit was, but I wasn't. I'm going to be going to, going to seminary and become a priest. She said, her response was, they'd be scraping bottom of the barrel if they accepted you. Fast forward, <laughs> we, go to, we go to seminary, we go to a college application. I get a letter one morning, and I bring it into the, my moderator, Sister, Sister Trays, and she was... Uh, very, very proud of her students, you know, and you, you got accepted into a Catholic university of all things. She would write it on the board, Louis Skirty, you know, Seton Hall University, or, you know, Tom Jones, whatever, university. And she says, now go show it to the principal. I said, oh, no, 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 no. She goes, no, go show this letter to the principal. No, no, no. She, she and I don't get along that well, I said. Go show it to the principal. And you didn't mess with her. So I 
door, and, I, and the principal had a big glass door, and I knocked on the door, bang, bang, bang. Scurdy, what do you want? Real sweet. Scurdy, what do you want? And I opened the door, and I said, they're scraping bottom. <laughs> and that's how I responded, I think, to the Holy Spirit, my vocation. Contrary to the world, contrary to the system, but hopefully in unity with God and the call. 